All right, let's take a look at the Big Ten West Division, starting with Mighty Wisconsin off an 11-3 season, straight up 7-2 in the conference. Wisconsin Badgers 9-3-1 against the spread, and they are a run-first team with a great defense, 8-6 under the total. That's part of a 15-9 run under the total. And Paul Christ in his third year has got a very good team, coming back 7 on offense, 7 on defense, the defending the defending Western champion, which means they've been in the Big Ten title game in four of the last six years. They were there last year, losing to Penn State as a three-point favorite, 38-31. to The Badgers run a pro-style offense, but it's largely a run-heavy attack. The Badgers averaged 34 minutes, 58 seconds possession. That led the FBS. The offense looks strong again. 28.4 points per game with 67th in the nation. 179 yards passing, but 203 yards rushing per game. That is the mantelpiece of this offense. And they'll be good again because you're running back Chris James and Braderick Shaw. James sat out last season after transferring from Pittsburgh, but he has good experience rushing the football. And then the offensive line, once again, for Wisconsin, very strong with four starters back, all who have outstanding potential. Plus, they got a freshman in Cole Van Lannan, who's terrific. And then you got the returning quarterback, Alex Hornibrek. He was forced in as a freshman last year, a pro-style quarterback who had nine touchdowns and seven picks. As they didn't ask him to do a lot, but over 1,200 yards passing, so he had plenty of experience. And he's got his top returning wide receiver in Jazz Peavy back 635 yards. So you get some, at least some balance on the Badger offense, but it's going to be a run-heavy attack again, which should be extremely productive behind this offensive line. And, of course, who needs to score a lot of points when you get this Wisconsin defense? Once again, they were dynamite, 15.5 points per game. That was fourth in the country. This will be the third consecutive year with a new defensive coordinator, although Jim Leonard, he was the defensive backs coach, so the players know him, and he's familiar with the system. The strength of the Badgers' defense is going to be these inside the linebackers that are so talented, T.J. Edwards, Jack Sitchi, Chris Orr, and Ryan Connolly. And they pick up a junior college transfer defensive end and Andrew Van Gickel. He can step right in, too. So you're going to have a very strong Badger defensive line again. And the secondary, very strong as Wisconsin finished tied for second in FBS with 22 interceptions. They do lose two of their top defensive backs in the secondary, but you get safety Dakota Dixon and Derek Tindall back, bringing plenty of experience. And then they got J- safeties, Joe Ferguson and LeBron Figaro. They also saw some time. They also pick up Hawaii transfer Nick Nelson at the cornerback position. He's a big physical player, and he's probably going to be a starter right away. So this Wisconsin defense should be top 10, top 15 in the nation again. The Badger schedule for 2017 well they had a really difficult schedule last year and had a great season but 2017 looks much easier they're going to open the season at BYU they got Nebraska Illinois Indiana Minnesota and they got home games against Iowa and Michigan that game was at Michigan a year ago was a dogfight 14 to 7 and now they got the Wolverines at home the Badgers have been an incredible home team over the last 13 years 81-11 straight up 50-35 and 1 Against the spread, Wisconsin will be the team to beat in the West again. All right, let's take a look at the Nebraska Cornhuskers, 9-4 straight up last year, 6-3 in the Big Ten for Coach Mike Riley beginning his third season. Got six starters back on offense, five on defense as they run this pro-style attack. Nebraska last year, perfect 7-0 to start the year and then faded 2-4 straight up, 2-3-1 against the spread. The offense averaged 26.5 points per game. That was 79th in the nation. Had a little bit of balance, 211 yards passing and 169 yards rushing. You got junior Canner Lee and redshirt freshman Patrick O'Brien, a pocket passer. They will be battling for the Huskers' starting jobs. It's a new look behind center. And they were not a very good team at rushing the football ninth in the Big Ten. In fact, they had no runner over 900 yards. They do have Devine Ozigbo back, 402 yards rushing, just 4.2 yards per carry. And Trey Bryan is back, but he only averaged four yards per carry. Nebraska really hasn't had an elite running back or an elite offensive line for some time now. And I can't see that happening again, as Riley likes to go with balance on offense. Going with the passing game, they do have Stanley Morgan. Junior returning a junior wide receiver with 453 yards 
So they'll be balanced again, but they need to get into the end zone more. That's going to be a concern with the new quarterback stepping in. The defense for Nebraska, very good last year, 22.8 points per game. That was 31st in the nation. However, they do lose seven key players, and they do have a weak spot. That was run defense, giving up 141 yards rushing per game. So they have a new defensive coordinator in Bob Diaco. This guy was at Cincinnati and Notre Dame. Question is, he likes to run a 3-4 scheme, and do they really have the personnel for a 3-4 scheme? That's certainly a question mark coming into the new season. Line play is a question mark, but the secondary is very strong for the Huskers. Chris Jones, Joshua Callow, Kieran Williams. But keep in mind, Nebraska, when they played Ohio State last year, they gave up 62 points. They gave up 40 to Iowa and 38 to Tennessee. So they have some work to do despite the overall points per game allowed. Now, Nebraska on the road, very good the last few years, 26-18 and 18 run, 26-16 and 2 against the spread, although last year on the road, just 2-3 and three straight up and against the spread, also on a 9-4 and four run under the total. The schedule for 2017, a big one in Week 2, they're going to be traveling to Oregon. That was a game that they won a year ago at home against Oregon, 35-32 to 32 shootout. They were a three-point favorite, now they're heading out on the road. And then the road games down the road for Nebraska at Illinois and Purdue won't be too bad, but you got Minnesota, Penn State. They do catch a break getting Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Iowa all at home. All right, let's move to let's move to that Iowa Hawkeye team, which comes off an eight and five season. And it was kind of a disappointing season for the Hawkeyes. Two years ago, everything went right as they won eleven games. But then last year, despite all that returning talent, particularly on defense, they lost. Some games they probably should have won. Got blown out by Penn State. They lost to Northwestern, a defensive team that was actually a shootout, 38-31. They were 11-point favorite in that game. And they even lost at home to North Dakota State as a two-touchdown favorite, 23-21. to So Kirk Ferentz has some rebuilding to do this year. Six starters back on offense, five on defense, a 35-18 and run the last couple of years, as well as 8-5 and under the total with a defensive team last year as part of a 19-14-2 and run over the total, despite going under last year. And they got some changes on offense. New quarterback to a team that averaged just 24.9 points per game. That was 95th in the nation. It should have been better as they had a senior quarterback last year. 153 yards passing, just 171.8 yards rushing. So Greg Davis retires the offensive coordinator. I'm going to see some new changes with the coaching staff, including Brian Ferentz, the former offensive line coach, He's going to be stepping in as offensive coordinator. He's going to have to work in relatively new quarterbacks. you got Stanley or Nathan Stanley. He is a sophomore quarterback, only threw for 62 yards last year. And then they got some backups who will be fighting for time in Tyler Wiegers and Drew Cook. And then the wide receivers are a concern. A lot of youth here with Jeremy Smith, 314 yards. He was third in the team in yards beyond that. They have some weak spots or some lack of experience, which is why you may see Devontae Young, a freshman wide receiver, get thrown in, a very talented recruit. Have to believe the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to have to go back to the ground game, which was a strength last year. Four offensive line starters are back for the Hawkeyes. Right guard Sean Welsh started, has started 36 games. Left tackle Boone Myers has been in 22 games. The left guard spot is fine with Keegan Render. And they got a lot of depth along the line. Passing game, though, loses its top players. So you're probably going to have to see more double tight end sets, which means more of 6'5 sophomore tight end. Noah Fant had 70 yards last year, but it looks like the team is going to be moving to a more conservative offense running game and throwing short, safe passes to a double tight end set as they work in these new quarterbacks. So don't look for an explosive Hawkeye offense. The defense has been dominant these last few years. A senior-laden group last year. That was outstanding. In fact, the last two years, the Hawkeyes have ranked ninth. Actually, the last three years, ninth, 15th, and 10th in the nation in points allowed. Just 17.9 points per game last year with 10th in the country. However, they lost some of their key players. It's going to be a younger team along the defensive line. Going to have to look at junior defensive end Matt Nelson stepping in along with right tackle Matt Bazata. And then you got some linebackers who have some youth as well as the secondary too. The secondary is very young for Iowa. Michael Ojemaduti steps in as well as cornerback Manny Ragamba. He did play last year and had two picks. He's going to have to see more time likely as the starter. But overall, some new looks on this Iowa defense, both sides of the line really. The schedule for the Hawkeyes. 
the big Week 2 rivalry game against Iowa State. They've done well the last two years in that. And then Week 4, home against Penn State, a team that routed them last year. The Big Ten defending champ is going to be in. And they got road games for Iowa at Michigan State, Northwestern, Wisconsin, Nebraska. They do get Ohio State at home November 4th. Up next, the Northwestern Wildcats. But first, Jim Feist has a special free offer. This is Jim Feist in Las Vegas, and I want to thank you for watching all of my videos. We'd love if you'd subscribe to my sports betting channel. It's free, so why not subscribe? Just click on the subscribe button, and I'll give you seven days of free plays. Seven days of free plays on me. You'll get a YouTube message sent to you with the word, the code word, and an 800 number. You just call in with the code, and whatever you want, call in, and we'll give you free service each and every day for seven straight days. And thanks again for watching and subscribing. All right, let's move on to Northwestern Wildcats off a winning season of 7-6, to six, straight up 5-4 and four in the conference. They were winning games and covering numbers 8-5 and five against the spread. Part of a team that's 16-10 and 10 under the spread the last couple of years, also 9-4 and four under the total with a run-oriented team that has great defense. Returning this year, you got nine starters on offense, seven on defense, on a 17-9 and nine run under the total for head coach Pat Fitzgerald. He's now in his 12th season, and this offense was 87th in the nation in points scored with 245 yards passing per game, 153 yards rushing. This is a team that was a 26-point underdog when they faced Ohio State on the road, and they almost won the game, a 24-20 to game that was real close. For this season, you got Clayton Thorson returning as the 6'4 junior quarterback. He was very good, 22 touchdowns, 9 interception, over 3,000 yards passing, and 58.6 completions per game. And they also have a dynamite running back in Justin Jackson, a senior over 1,500 yards rushing last year, 5.1 yards Per carry, this guy the last two years, three years, has been dynamite, over 1,100 yards rushing as a freshman, as a sophomore, over 1,400 and 1,500. Last year, you throw in the fact that four offensive line starters are back. This is going to be a very strong ground game, probably a balanced offense, too, as they also have sophomore running back John Moten, 340 yards, really loaded on offense. The wide receiving core, they lost their top receiver in Austin Carr, so they're going to have to take a look at Flynn Nagel, a junior wide receiver at 447 yards, but also keep in mind they pick up a guy from Oregon, wide receiver Jalen Brown is a junior, two years of eligibility, 318 yards with the Ducks last year, got to believe he'll be thrown in. This looks like a pretty good offense for Northwestern, and the defense has been dynamite the last two years, just 22 0.1 points per game last year, 23rd in the nation. Two years ago, they were seventh in the nation. They do lose their top defensive end, two guys who combined for 13 sacks, but there is talent back. Joe Gaziano is a sophomore, as well as senior Xavier Washington. Both those guys, though, had four and a half sacks last year, stepping in, and they got a linebacker, Nate Hall, is a four, 73 tackles last year. And the secondary is going to be a strength for the Wildcats, 16 interceptions as a unit last year. Junior cornerback Montre Hartage returns. He had five interceptions last year. He got junior safety Jared McGee with three picks. He is back along with senior safety Godwin Odebuki, who had two picks. All are back. It's going to be a great Northwestern defense. Another team probably to look at under the total. Once again, the schedule going to be playing Nevada Reno early on and Duke and Bowling Green. So they could be 3-0 and when they head to Wisconsin for the big week four showdown. Got some road games at Maryland, Nebraska, and Illinois. Really not that bad. And they get Penn State at home in week five. The revenge game on the schedule is Minnesota Gophers as they were a four-point favorite against Minnesota last year, lost 29-12, to and they're going to be hosting them November 18th. Talked about this team look at under the total. They have been for a while. Northwestern 32-14-1 run under the total. We'd be surprised to see that again, but this team's going to have seven or eight wins, maybe even nine, and definitely make a bowl once again. All right, let's take a look at the Minnesota Golden Gophers, off a very good season of nine and four. Winning record in Big Ten play of 5-4. and four. Been covering numbers, too. 6-5-2 and two against the spread last year. Part of a 22-15-2 spread run. However, 
the head coach is gone, Tracy Clay. So P.J. Fleck is stepping in his first year after coaching Western Michigan. He did a great job then. He's got some returning experience, five on offense, six on defense. But overall, it's a very young roster with this new coaching staff. The offense for the Gophers, 29.3 points per game. That was 63rd in the nation. Didn't really do it with a passing game, 173.6 yards passing, but a very good ground attack, over 183 yards per game. However, they have new quarterbacks for this coaching stack. Senior Kona Rhoda is going to be available, and he only threw for 88 yards last year. They got a 6'5 sophomore in Demry Croft, who is a very good dual threat. Might work with the coaching staff as well as freshman Tanner Morgan, but the new coach, P.J. Fleck, he did a terrific job developing quarterbacks at Western Michigan, most, most recently Zach Terrell. So they got the right guy for the job, but a lot of inexperience for the coaching staff. Good news is they have dynam dynamic playmakers, starting with running back, junior running back Rodney Smith, over 1,100 yards rushing last year, 4.8 yards per carry. They also have Shannon Brooks, 650 yards rushing, 4.7 yards per carry, despite the fact that he missed three games. And then the wide receiver core has Rashad Still. He's a junior, 349 yards, but 19.4 yards per reception was second on the team. So I got some very good playmakers. The defense for this team, 22.9 points per game. That was 32nd in the nation. In fact, they were sensational against the run, 124.4 yards rushing per game. However, they lost their two key run stuffers. With that said, they do have a lot of talent and depth returning. Galen Elmore and Steven Richardson are very solid up front. And they got a defensive end in Winston Delabador, who steps in. He played 13 games, five starts last year. So it'll be a very good defense. The defensive backfield has plenty of returning experience, starting with safety Antoine Winfield Jr. and cornerback Antonio Chenault. Very dependable. And they have some young guys for depth with Kenny Hawley and Kendry Thomas. Now the schedule Actually, could start 5-0. and They're playing Buffalo at Oregon State, Middle Tennessee State, Maryland, and Purdue. But that's the good news after that. At Iowa and Michigan, back-to-back. -back. And they got a stretch playing three of four games on the road starting October 28th. Still, a winning record is likely for Minnesota, despite the fact there's a lot of youth with this new coaching staff. All right, let's take a look at the Purdue Boilermakers for 2017. Rebuilding team, 3-9 and nine last year, 1-8 and eight in the conference. Didn't cover betting numbers either, 5-7 and seven against the spread. Bad defense, it explains an 8-4 and four run over the total, 15-9 and nine run over the total. Well, there's a lot of returning experience for a new coaching staff, 7 on offense, 8 on defense. However, last couple of years, 2-10 and 3-9, and and which means they are 2-15 and 15 in Big Ten play. The new coach is Jeff Brom. He comes over from Western Kentucky. And that Western Kentucky team was number one in the nation in points scored over 45 and a half last year. And they were second in yard score. So he loves a wide open attack. And he, he's going to need it with Purdue, which averaged 24.6 points per game last year. That was 101st in the nation. They actually can pass the football, though. 295 yards passing per game, but only 96 rushing because all they could do is pass the football, but they actually should be pretty good again because Dave Blower returns. He's a junior quarterback, 25 touchdowns, 21 picks because he had to throw all the time, but over 3,300 yards passing. They also have sophomore quarterback Elijah Sandala. He's a highly touted prospect, a former Mr. Football in Kentucky. So they got two very good choices. Do have some new wide receivers, which means you have to look at the tight end. Cole Herdman doing a lot of the work again, as he was pretty good last year with 344 yards. And they pick up a 6'2 freshman wide receiver, DJ Edwards. He's probably going to be thrown in there. But overall, a lot of rebuilding to do as the new coaching staff has plenty of work to do. The one strength that they have, though, is the junior running back, Markel Jones. Very good at rushing the football, 616 yards last year. And he's a dual threat out of the backfield with 32 receptions for 215 yards. The defense, boy, this team has a lot of work to do on defense. The Boilermakers couldn't stop anybody. 117th in the nation, 38.3 points per game. They allowed 238 yards rushing per game. They lack interior size and don't have any kind of a pass rush. They do have a new coordinator, though, in Nick Holt. He comes over also from Western Kentucky. They do have six of their top seven tacklers returning. 
linebacker TJ McCollum is a newcomer. He comes over from Western Kentucky. And they got a junior college transfer in defensive end Kay Higgins, who's probably going to be thrown in. And a one guy in the secondary, TJ Jallo, they can count on. But overall, no run stuffers up front and a lack of depth overall. It's going to be a, quite a rebuilding year defensively. So it might be a team to look at over the total with all of the offensive capability that they have in rebuilding on defense. Purdue on the road the last couple of years, 2-18 and 18 straight up record, but they've been undervalued because they're 13-6-1 against the spread. And keep in mind, if you like to play totals, those road games, 20 road games, five times they allowed 40 points or more, and they allowed 56 points and 50 in two others. All right, finally, let's take a look at the Illinois Fighting Illini. Three wins last year, nine losses, just two and seven in conference play. A run here in Big Ten play of eight and 33 overall. They were five and seven against the spread. Lovey Smith is in his second year. He's got plenty of returning talent on offense, nine, but only four on defense. Offensive coordinator is Ryan Cuban, and they have a lot of work to do. They average just 19.7 points for a game, a dreadful offense, 174.6 yards passing, 140 and a half yards rushing. That points per game was 122nd in the nation. They, got, they had to use three quarterbacks last year because of an injury to West Lund. So two of the quarterbacks who saw time will return, which is a plus sophomore quarterback. Jeff George was thrown in four touchdowns and five interceptions. He got his feet wet with 470 yards passing. And then there's junior quarterback Chase Crouch, who had one touchdown and one pick before an injury. He's coming back from a shoulder injury, had 249 yards passing. The backfield has a very good piece in Kendrick Foster, 720 yards rushing, 5.7 yards per carry, and he's not alone. Reggie Corbin was very good, 523 yards, 6.1 yards per carry, plus five starters back on the offensive line, although it was a relatively weak offensive line. The leading wide receiver, Malik Turner, is back. He's a senior, 712 yards. The key, though, is going to be Mike Dudek. This guy was dynamic as a freshman three years ago, set all kinds of freshman receiving records for Illinois, but the last two years, all kinds of injuries for them. So they're hoping he can get healthy. He had over 1,000 yards as a freshman. Certainly a big question mark, but if he is healthy, they can really improve this passing game. They need some work on defense, too. 92nd in the nation, 31.9 yards, uh, 31.9 points per game, 209 yards rushing per game. The passing attack under Lovey Smith's cover, too, was actually the strength. They struggled badly against the run, and that's going to be a problem as they lose four defensive line starters. So you're going to have to look at Jamal Millen and Keenan Jackson. They both started five games last season, got in a total of 45 tackles. They got a pretty good defensive end in Tito Udenigbo. He started one game, but they see a lot of time. And they'll have to throw in a young freshman and Owen Carney, a defensive end who comes from a Florida high school who has a lot of skills and tools. But overall, when you look at Illinois, they finished with a negative turnover margin. The defense fourth, just 18 turnovers, and they were pushed around at the line of scrimmage, struggled against the run of defense that finished number 12 in the Big Ten allowing nearly 220 yards rushing per game. So they're going to have trouble stopping the run again, have to get this passing game opened up, maybe score some points, which could be a look at high-scoring games over the total the schedule. They got a couple of home games to open the season against Ball State and Western Kentucky, so it may get a 2-0 and start. And even throwing a game at South Florida, maybe 3-0, and but then reality kicks in for them. Nebraska at Iowa, back-to-back. The road games against Minnesota. Purdue and Ohio State can't see a winning record for the Illini for this season. All right, I want to remind you that Jim Feist has that preseason special, an early bird special. If you want to get on board for football, the entire NFL preseason from Jim Feist, just call 888-777-4155. Include his preseason game of the year. Get on board early before the college football season starts. 